Yeah, my name is Marco von Zwetselaar. I'm calling in from Kilimanjaro, Tanzania. And this is going to be a little bit of a different talk from the previous ones. You know, when, when Greg Thane uh, uh, and I had an email exchange about the talk, he said, well, don't, don't make it too technical. Uh, there's all kinds of people in the audience. Um, and um, and compared to the, the things I saw with uh, millions of, of, of uh, job submissions per uh, week, well, that's not the level we're at. Um, so um, uh, I'll, I'll glide you in easily to your break afterwards um, while my family is waiting here for me to cook dinner. Um, anyway, um, so the, the talk came about when, when uh, Todd on the mailing list uh, asked people to drop pins on locations with condor pools. And I saw Africa was totally empty. Uh, and I could proudly drop two pins in Africa because I've set up two small uh, HD Condor uh, HPCs in two locations here. Uh, so this uh, is going to be a talk a, a bit from the other side, both user and admin, because I'm uh, I'm sort of both with a group of people using it now, but we're not a big shared installation. Um, uh, but I'll tell you about how we got these HPCs running here, why they're running uh, Condor and, and, and how we benefit. Um, so the two uh, HPCs I've set up are uh, at the Kilimanjaro Clinical Research Institute in Moshi, Tanzania, that's where I live. Uh, my wife and I moved here in 2012 uh, when she became a doctor at the, at the large hospital here and I uh, got a job as the IT guy at the uh, at the research institute of the hospital, a clinical research institute of one of the big hospitals in Tanzania. Uh, I'm not uh, a, a doctor or a medical researcher. I'm um, well. I'm not even a, a computer science guy. You know, I'm one of those who in the '80s started out on home computers and then never stopped programming. Um, uh, but a little bit more about the, the cluster uh, later on. Then this year, I've set up another one in the Noguchi uh, Memorial Institute of Medical Research in Ghana, uh, in Accra. So um, um, my, most of my time, I work for the Seek Africa project, which is a, uh, a, a major UK aid grant to support uh, labs around Africa in doing uh, DNA sequencing for antimicrobial resistance, surveillance, and diagnostics. Um, so it's a collaboration of the institutes that you would see here, uh, plus Danish Technical University in um, Copenhagen. And um, well, you, you may have heard that uh, the the you you may have heard the the. Uh, problem of antibiotic resistance or antimicrobial resistance being uh, the, the creeping pandemic or the silent pandemic. Um, it was the cause of death for uh, more than a million people in 2019, which is more than HIV and malaria combined. Uh, and it's estimated to be as big as cancer as the primary cause of death in 2050 with 10 million deaths a year. So there's quite a lot of research now going on into uh, antimicrobial resistance. Our specific focus uh, within the, the field is on the genomic epidemiology of um, uh, AMR. That is, we study antimicrobial resistance on the genomic level. So uh, the, the project is Fleming funded, uh, which is a very large, well, UK investment in uh, antimicrobial research around the world. Now, as I imagined a, an audience full of rocket scientists and um, um, uh, physicists and so on, I thought I'd, I'd have to put in a little bit, you know, a one minute explanation of what, a micro, uh, what, what uh, molecular biology is all about and, and the stuff that we do. So here on the left, you see uh, Francis Crick's uh, central dogma, as he called it in 1958. Um, he later realized that the word dogma wasn't appropriate, but yeah, that was years later. Uh, anyway, at the top, DNA, uh, the, the beautiful coil structure 
that um, uh, sits in every cell of every living being. It consists of huge, very long sequences of four bases or nucleotides that we just abbreviate uh, by their first letter, A, T, C, and G. So in terms of the work that we do, that is our data. We deal with huge databases um, uh, and files full of A, C, Ts, and Gs. Um, DNA carries the, the genetic information that gets replicated between generations. And meaningful stretches on a DNA, we would call RNA. Uh, RNA gets transcribed via all sorts of complex processes from the DNA and then gets translated into proteins. And the proteins are the, are the things that make a biological structure and function. So that's sort of molecular biology in, in one minute. So the relevance to antimicrobial resistance and the sort of studies that we are doing is um, you could imagine DNA coding for a protein, an enzyme, that breaks down the active compounds in um, uh, in an antibiotic or developing a mutation that would um, uh, make make the the antibiotic not catch on to the genome to destroy well e eventually the bacteria um, so um, that's that's where we are that's sort of the area where we are working and I, as i uh, even in the in the in the three talks before this i was counting the number of times that i heard the word uh, knob and i just realized one thing so in terms of the terminology biologists have uh, have a gift for doing neologisms so uh, if you hear a biologist use the word that ends in ohm like genome what they mean is it's it's all the the genes together. So you have one gene, you have a genome. Uh, you have a lot of transcribed genes. Well, we call that a transcriptome. Um, you have uh, translated proteins that will be the proteome. And so I was thinking, you know, as a, as, as a thing to pick up for, for Condor, the knobome would definitely describe all these knobs that Condor has. And, and then Nobomics would be our shared struggle to un understand them in their uh, entirety, uh, but that would be that's a sideline. Um, so what we do uh, in our studies is we take uh, um, DNA from bacteria, we sample um, from infection infections in humans, for instance, and then try to read that DNA uh, into uh, data files. The thing that we deal with and what this slide shows is that over the course of time since uh, 2003 when the first human genome was sequenced uh, sequencers have become incredibly powerful uh, initially just sequencing about 100 million bases at a time with the Sanger uh, sequencing that's when the first uh, human genome was sequenced to several terabytes per run as we call this of the sequencer at the top. Uh, the other development in uh, sequencing has been that sequencers are able to read longer and longer fragments of DNA uh, through time. So in, in the green circle is the are the sort of sequences that we, we would be using for microbial sequencing nowadays. Um, so they're called benchtop second generation sequencing sequencers, and they get about 25 to 250 gigs per run of data. Um, the Minion is one of the most interesting developments of the last 10 years. It's, it's a portable device, uh, the size of a USB stick that you actually stick in the side of your laptop and that you can take into the field uh, to sequence DNA. And it, it also yields in the order of 20 gigs of data per run. Uh, so clearly, we're not looking at uh, the scale of other projects uh, that I've that I've seen presenting here, um, but for microbial genomics, and in particular, of course, once you move to human genomics, the human genome is about a thousand times bigger than uh, bacterium. Uh, one human genome is three billion reads. 
uh, is at three billion bases, a bacterium would be a million to six million or so. Uh, that's the sort of data that we're dealing with. Um, so with the um, with the biology uh, behind us, um, so what is the what, what's the work of what, what what's the job of bioinformaticians? We get the genomic data and try to distill that into useful information. Uh, one of the first things that about, that we would do is sequencers produce uh, small fragments of DNA when they do that run. Um, so we end up with at the end of a sequencer run hundreds of millions, uh, uh, up to a billion or so of small fragments of DNA, and we want to reconstruct that into a genome. Um, that job is called assembly, and um, it it has been likened by uh, likened to you know putting a pile of a few hundred newspapers on a, uh, um, uh, on top of each other. Today's today's edition of, of a newspaper blowing them up into tiny shreds, hundreds of millions, millions of shreds, and then trying to puzzle that back together. So this is the sort of com compute job that you would that you would start with. Uh, other things that we would do in genomics uh, and bioinformatics is looking for antimicrobial uh, resistance genes. Um, we wouldn't need to reconstruct the whole genome of the organism. We might just take the source reads, the stuff that comes from the sequencer, and try to map that on a reference database that has all the um, uh, uh, known antimicrobial resistance genes or vir virulence genes or you know genes coding for other sorts of things. Uh, so that's that's two of the kinds of um, uh, compute jobs that we do. Another one, uh, which which will have been, um, well, I, I would say familiar to anyone uh, of, uh, over the past um, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, is uh, the construction of phylogeny. Um, in other words, you take thousands or hundreds of thousands of genomes of, for instance, in this case, the SARS-CoV-2, uh, virus, try to um, compute their a large matrix of their mutual similarities, and then try to reconstruct a sort of a family tree of um, uh, where they came from, in order to identify variants that would be of public health uh, concern. For instance, if everyone will have heard about the infamous uh, spike gene on um, the SARS-CoV-2 genome. Um, so that's that's some of the things uh, we do in bioinformatics, but of course, you know, the question was, um, how did the condor land uh, on the Kilimanjaro? Uh, this is this is the current server park at Keshirai. It, it, it may look tiny to uh, many of you, um, but um, uh, and I'll let you guess the names of our servers from the the who is who uh, the who is who pictures. Um, the, 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 and, and the one at the right at the right bottom is the one where it all started with. So in in 2013, we won a grant together with the uh, um, Danish Technical University to set up a, um, a sequencing facility uh, in the KSRI lab in uh, Moshi Kilimanjaro. That was before pretty much anyone was doing much uh, bioinformatics or genomics here, and. Um, what we started out with were three laptops, um, pretty pretty beefy for 2013, um, and they had the um, uh, the pipeline that Danish Technical University used for all their genomic microbial genomic analyses. It was a port of the software that ran on their big cluster, which was aptly called the Computer Room, uh, of course, and. Um, we um uh, it it was ported the, uh, to, to these laptops but even though the um the the system that was on it was called pbs the portable batch system it didn't very much work so i i started to um work on an alternative i looked at slurm then of course i looked at condor and condor had this this marvelous feature that we could use um, brilliantly, because we had three of these laptops. One was 
I had the I had deported PBS. The other two were used by me and my colleague. What Connor could do was it could run on the on the three tied together and then uh, do its work while we were off to do other things. Uh, that set it apart from PBS and, um, and, and Slurm in those days. I must admit there was another reason for us to choose uh, Condor, which was that when I read that the LIGO project was using it, you know, I mean, the, the, the coolest physics experiment since Galileo was dropping rocks off the, off the Tower of Pisa. So, so that's how I, I got to install a Condor on it. And um, over time, since 2013, I, I managed to get multiple grants to build it out into a four node cluster with one uh, large two terabyte memory node, uh, half a petabyte of storage in an offsite backup to GPU nodes. Um, and just as a, uh, an aspect of what what makes this typically Africa, um, we did not have the network capacity to do all kinds of things online. You know, even, even now when I need to download a, a 25 gig database, that is a day, two days uh, download. So it really is intended for local um, um, uh, local deployment. And I think uh, as, as the final, uh, and, and actually this brought down, you know, weekend long runs on uh, one or two laptops to, you know, by, by now with the four node cluster down to a run that takes about one hour um, before we, we hand the data to, to our, our customers, to the researchers that send uh, their isolates. Um, finally, I think um, as as a as a huge um, what do you call it like like a huge benefit of using Condor in our setting is I don't know how this is in other fields, but in genomics and bioinformatics, the word is pipelines. Uh, so there's hundreds thousands of tools being developed uh, uh, all the time in bioinformatics, some very ge generic, others very dedicated to certain purposes. And much of our work consists of tying them up into pipelines that do useful work. Um, so you said the colored boxes here would be all these tools um, that we that, that I sort of linked together into uh, what, what would be called a pipeline. And this diagram shows our standard bacterial analysis pipeline so we would take you know one run of 100 samples a thousand samples or any number of samples throw it in um, and at the end have some tables to give to the customers uh, plus a whole lot of analysis data that they that they that they want um, of course to anyone who knows a bit of condor this diagram just screams dag man <laughs> and and yeah it, it it was a bit of a of a struggle initially to get that working but now that it's running um the 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 big benefit is what used to take us days of hands-on uh time to set up uh, uh the analysis for for a bunch of samples uh, is down to 10 minutes of setting up setting up an input sheet um let's condor scatter the work over the cpus and the nodes and then you know an hour later we will have all the data compared to literally a week a week or more of uh, of work so um here's um a big thank you to uh, the condor developers from africa um we're happily using it maybe totally different from what uh, i saw in the previous three presentations but um um, highly valuable and much appreciated. Thank you so much for your attention.